You are now listening to the Too Short for the League podcast, hosted by Caleb Kingston. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to our sponsors, ID Athletic and Land Performance Center, for bringing the show to you guys. Today, we have a great guest. He is now on the Coburn Cougars, Kyle Armour. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, mate. <laughs> That's all right. What have you been up to this offseason? Well, oh, it started about August we lost in the first round, and I took off to Europe. Couldn't get the championship ring, so... Um, I actually pulled out a ring and proposed <laughs> to my missus in Sicily. Yeah. So as you could imagine, I've had about a thousand Aperol spritz, probably a hundred cheese boards, and I don't know that many pastas. Um, went, yeah, did just a big Europe trip um, through Puglia and uh, met up with some college mates uh, and, my, and some of my family, my cousins, uh, overseas in Ibiza. Yep. So that was not chill. Uh, Barcelona, and then came back and yeah, had to celebrate with the family. So were you nervous? Uh, proposing, yeah. I I was thought I was cool as a cucumber, but I was shit myself. I, yeah, yeah. The big thing. So it how was, long did it take you to, like to plan it all out? Oh, I've been planning it out for probably twelve months. Oh, really? Yeah. So you knew that you were going to propose the in year Europe? before I was in Sicily, and I yeah, we'd go for walks up at this big church out in the village, and uh, where my girlfriend's, uh, where my fiance's family's from, mm-hmm. uh, and. I was kind of like, oh, yeah, this place is dreamy. This is the spot. This yeah. is where I'm doing it if I'm doing it. Yeah. When you're in your off-season, do you, like, just completely black out basketball? Like, Not really. I play in, like, every off-season, every, like, off-season league I can. Like, so you in the Orba this year? Yeah. Yep, oh, yep, wow. yep. Playing out on Sundays. Um, Coburn on Tuesdays. Lakeside Saturdays. Um, <laughs> just to just keep fit? Or? Any pick-up game. I'd, yeah, catch up with different mates. Um, Marshall, Scotty, those guys play pick-up. Yeah, um, some of the Perry Lakes boys. So just yeah, wherever I can get a game, I'm usually pretty keen. When you retire, you reckon you'll still play like social? Yeah, basketball keep the wheels moving. <laughs> <laughs> I think how, so. long do you, how long do you think you got left? It's all feel like. So if I if I feel good, then I'll just keep playing. If I'm having fun, I'll I'll keep playing. So can't see myself as a guy that just goes to the gyms. Like, yeah, so it's just a bit on the on the bench press. I'm like, no, it's yeah, and I like the camaraderie, being around the boys. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely a boys' boy. So. Um, Does your body still feel good, though? Yeah. Like, you stretching and stuff before games? Stretching, games. massage, the whole... You went to ice cold. baths? Yeah, yeah. yeah really? Yeah. I mean, there's a bit of a craze around. Yeah. yeah. Like, so you just get into that, or, like, you've been... Been doing it since 16, 17. At the AS, you kind of forced to do it yeah. after every session. Um, so it's now it's, like, super popular, and everyone's like, oh, dopamine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this. So, but, yeah, it does help, and... Maybe it's placebo. Yeah. Um, it works for me. It makes you feel good. And um, numbs it. And I'm like, all right. Well, when we had yeah. Marty on here, he said he was sore. Like his hips, his legs. Yeah, really? yeah, Yeah. He says it's from like coaching all day. Yeah. Like to so being on his feet. Bit different. I'm like a keyboard warrior. <laughs> person on the phone for work and stuff like that. Whereas yeah. he's on his feet. Kind of. Do you ever like flex on your workers that you play, but you've played professionally and then you've, you're a semi-professional sports player? Or you're just like. What What'd you say, flex? So like flex, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I flex it on, yeah. at work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or does no one give a crap? No, I'm kind of like, hey, I'm that guy that, you know, played two minutes 50 for the Wildcats <laughs> across two games. and Yeah. Got an know, assist? Got an assist yeah. and, and got Damien Martin his drink bottles and, <laughs> and waved the towel and celebrated everyone. Um, yeah. But I'm still on the team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> does anyone care, though? Uh, so, it, yeah, in, in, like, corporate world or business world, yeah, it shows you're disciplined, committed, you work in a team, yeah. all those good things, that attributes that you want in, a, in an employee or – Plural, um, that type of thing. So it does help, but it's probably more the stories from living abroad, living over east, mm. having a different network and building different friendships and connections. So that's probably what I've, um, yeah, basketball's kind of been a, bit, a great platform yeah. to network and tell those stories that separate you from, you know, someone the else rest. that's just, I don't know, maybe not travelled or yeah, had yeah. those experiences. Like, um, for example, when I was in at Augusta State in college, like, the KKK paraded around my college. <laughs> what? And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, the closest thing I thought I'd ever get to the KKK is watching Bad Boys 2. <laughs> you know, like, I don't even know they existed, but yeah. these minority have such a voice and Americans still exist. I was in, yeah, Augusta's in Georgia, Dirty South. That's crazy. Just shit like that. Yeah. Um, which is pretty cool, so... 
I don't tell that story too often, but <laughs> yeah, that's you get, hectic. Give me a couple of bees, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll get into your college stuff, but like, let's let's address the elephant in the room. You've obviously switched teams. What was it about Coburn that uh, made you choose them? Um, oh, there's multiple reasons on different levels. Um, life changed a bit, so I live in I live in Fremantle, um, taking a new job, and which requires a lot of travelling, a lot more hours. Um, and I've known Clado for t- better half of 20 years. He's mm-hmm. so my assistant coach at Under-16 State, uh, assistant coach at Willerton. Um, he's a friend. Um, he, he's a great communicator. If anything, he's an over-communicator. It's something I probably really, really respect and appreciate because it's just black and white. It keeps it simple, right? Yep. Um, so, yeah, just, I guess, knowing his character and then uh, some of the personnel that he'd recruited um, – Reese Vague, friends with Hunter, I've known since he was four. His dad, Marty Clark, coached me at the AS. Yep. I've known Hunter since he was four. Um, nice little age gap. I was 18, he was four. Um, but then Saber Chan, I've been battling against him for better half of 10, 12 years. Yeah, he's over 200 games, isn't he? He's a gun, so yep. can't wait for him to get back. Um, and then some of the young guys, Josh Hunt or Gav. Gav yeah, I've known Gav for far out. Yeah, he Forever. said you guys always used to battle. And, like, when you got to finals, it was either one of you won. Like, Wilton Coburn. Yeah. Yeah. Wilton. yeah. So to be on the same court, we play in off-season leagues together, and he's just a bucket. Mm-hmm. Just get Gab the ball. It's the best offense. <laughs> yeah. Especially last night. If you guys didn't see the Coburn June Lup game, it was a one-point game with about a minute 30 left, maybe. And within a span of nine seconds, Gavin has hit three threes. Yeah. After, he, so he missed one. Someone got the offensive rebound, kicked it to him in the corner, made it. The next time down, made it. <laughs> and then the next time down on a fast break, everyone's like, look for Gavin, look for Gavin. No one picks him up. <laughs> he just drains another three. I'm like, oh, that's the game right there. He was impressive, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe he's retiring, though. Led the game in scoring, he's retiring. Yeah, he keeps saying that. And I'm thinking, we need to get, I don't know, we, we need to do something to influence or persuade him to go around again. It's kind of hard because if even if you win a championship, that's how he wants to finish. Like, he wants to finish on top. So even that wouldn't do it. I oh, know, I'm in denial a bit about it. <laughs> we'll see how we go. I'm only a month in there, so. Yeah. What was the recruitment process like uh, for Coburn? Did they, so did you hit him up first or did they hit you up? I actually re- I reached out to Clado, yep. sent him a text, um, sent Willison a text, um, took maybe a week, Willow to kind of get back. Um, and I spoke, Clado kind of was straight on the phone, was like, hey, let me make a couple calls. Um, yeah. Definitely wanted to entertain it, and and then it was a it was like a phone call, and I was like, oh, let's just do it. Yeah, I'm not going to be a shot. It's not a business deal. It's just it makes sense, and yeah, I know you. And what's the go. sort of chat about? Is it like, oh, this is how we see your role on the team? Or? This role, this is where we're at. This is what we got. Um, it was really black and white. He was like, this is the style of play. This is how I see you fitting in. He just said, yeah, it was no brainer for me, and I was like, well, it's no brainer for me then. Yeah, it's, it's just do it and get back to it yeah so I'd, I'd had like a pretty fun off season and i was ready to play again is it uh was it between just coburn and willerton yeah and lakeside of course uh yeah, yeah. of course yeah. um so i really enjoyed my time at lakeside and, and did my best to be part of the community and, and mentor and um and throw myself in that environment and we had yeah. a good year it was a, yeah it was good fun so mike's Mike's a great coach. He's just a he's a cool dude. Like, yeah. He's cool to play for. Yeah. So aren't you like similar age? <laughs> I think we're the same age. <laughs> he's just he's cool. Like he's he's an actual baller himself. Yeah. Like, I feel like if he didn't pull up sore, yep. probably some himself in play. Yeah, yeah. What's uh so you've played for five teams? Five clubs, yep. Williton Williton Junior, Williton Boy. Um had a stint in Lakeside when I'd come back from college under Andy Stewart. Uh, back to Willerton, uh, East Perth, Ooh. one year under Adam Ford. We won yep. it that year. 2014. 2014, yep. yep. So my knowledge, my knowledge is superior. I know. <laughs> no, I've only been following Done your since. Let's go. I've, I've only been following since like 2020. So any of the one before that, I'm like, oh, I'm struggling. <laughs> okay, so tw- yeah, 2014 was it, my best year under Adam Ford. Um, I did my ankle with the Sydney Kings. Came back, was trying to get back in. Um, had my best year, put myself in, I think, a good sit- like position. Uh, but sometimes you got to get lucky, and um, if you're on par with different guys, yep. you, you just got to like as a as a guard or a point guard at that time where there's limited spots in the NBL yep. on a roster. You've just got to be 
way better so it's not yeah know, yeah yeah up to up to some a coach's opinion or yeah. or whatever but yeah so i fell short we won it had a great year after that went back to willington spent i don't know several years there um and then about 30 kind of was like losing the fun in it met dave daniels at lakeside played for him it was one yeah a few of my favorite years yeah playing playing for him under him and his style and then um when he moved on chat um <laughs> i kind of went well i'll look at my options as well and that's when i went mandra for a year and back to lakeside and here we are. So I've just kind of moved as as the opportunities are presenting themselves for yeah. whatever motivation um, I've had at the time. Uh, but yeah, life has gone different directions, and I've. How was that manager season? Did you move down there? No, no, no. So I you drove. were driving. Yeah, it was a bit of a trek, and it was fun. Like manager's cool, right? Great community. Um, hadn't spent that much time down that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was good fun. It was a good year. Didn't enjoy the success that we had, but played on Traher and Jamie. Um, which was which both good, yeah, good experience. And like yeah. both the guys. How long how long were you driving to the trainings? Like an hour. Yeah, it's a good hour. There's a guy that's on the Slammers who lives in Perth, and he drives. Wow. To all the you know Take Xavier me. Cotton. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he drives from Perth <laughs> to Slammers for there. That's <laughs> tough, but hey, he can put on this too short for the league podcast. <laughs> You're there, bang. Yeah. Um, what do you like about Coburn? Loving it. Uh, the club in general, yeah. great. Coach staff obviously love Clado, uh, but the boys are cool. Like they've been so welcoming. Mm. Um, I saw they got a den. The den up, where all the boys come beers. Yeah, just a great spot, man. It's yeah. just like family friendly. It's the it's the one of those clubs that actually still have that community feel for me. Mm -hmm. um, Lakeside, Lakeside do have that as well, but Coburn's like the original. Like you know, yeah, are they the only club with like a clubhouse? I feel like it. Like, I don't know any others. Willow used to have that, but yeah. now, given the sports exploded, they're just it's more of a rec centre vibe for me. <laughs> yeah, like those the rims still need to be like you know. Yeah, someone needs to jam them, and it's still tell you what. Actually, fresh. you know that uh, put back dunk that Nathan Pond had last night. Yeah, he broke the rim. It it was straight and really? after because he like rim grazed it, but then held on. And it was slightly bent, I swear. Yeah, after I, I went to see my guy sitting next to him, I'm like, that's not straight anymore. <laughs> Pondy broke it. <laughs> Pondy's in shape, man. Yeah. He's he's worked his ass off, so credit to him. Hopefully he gets to enjoy the fruit. Like, last night was probably just a glimpse preseason game, but yep. still it felt like the closest thing to a game, any preseason game I played. Yeah, that's Sell the thing. crowd, it was like, yeah, it was sick. Yeah, that's the thing with um these guys. Like, I've gone to Redback so many times, like, Get a clubhouse. It'll be so fun. Like you go to footy games and stuff like that. And you can go in the clubhouse. Like imagine if basketball had something like that. It has that environment? Yeah. No, Coburn's been great. It's, I think four. I've been there four weeks. Four, five, oh, actually longer. Six yep. or seven weeks now. Loved it. Different mm. vibe. Good energy. Boys are up and about. Everyone's competing. So. What was your first training session like? Did you go in oh, there and be like, I'm brutal, man. I think we did the beat test. Oh, yo -yo. fitness test. Yeah, fitness test. And I'm like, Oof, it's been a good off season yeah been living my best life straight into a yo-yo um and then straight over to the bin yeah <laughs> what's the mindset like when you know you're going to play like no because you're talented enough like what's the mindset like going into a fitness test like, you, like i'm like in my head because i've in, in the past i've always been I always keep myself in reasonable shape mm -hmm. um and so i go in thinking i want to win i want to win this okay Fuck these young little yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Youngins calling me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me shit all the time. Last night I wore fifty one, the number fifty one, just because it was a large uh, number ten. But yeah, I'm okay. swimming in number ten because it was one of the bigs guys in the last jersey. <laughs> and one of the younger boy go, was going, "Hey, you wearing fifty one? Because like you're like you're only a couple of years off." <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Are you? You're the oldest in the team by like two months, aren't you? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you got same, Gav. Same. It's same. Me and Gav. <laughs> yeah. Man, because I feel like if I was like guaranteed to play, like it comes to a fitness test. If I've had like had a fun off season, I feel like I'm just gone. But it's good that you still have that competitive mindset. Yeah, and I feel like the only way to get respect off your peers and um, you know guys in, in the change room, locker room, like is to go hard and yep. prove yourself. And that's one thing. If you stay at the same club, you get away with those yeah, you know, veteran and kind of you can pull the vet card. But I kind of like from there, I want to. Compete and be one of the boys. Otherwise, I'll retire. 
Oh. Anyone uh, surprise you in the B test? Some of the young boys are fit, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> surprise? No, not not really. You kind of know who's fit. And mm-hmm. who's fit. So you started your junior career at Willison. Yeah. How old were you? Five years old. Five. Had an older brother, three years older, Trav, and um, he was a bit of a gun as a junior, and so I would play up a year and. I'd just be a little gym rat, mm-hmm. have a ball in, in my pocket, kind of a ball in my hand all the time. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of went through the willow domestic wobble. So it was wobble back then? Wobble back then, yep, okay. yep, yep. Um, back then. <laughs> <Funny>. <laughs> um, <laughs> then it was state yep. and then um, went through the whole just natural progression Um Made all Australian, all Australian camps, and then um, went to an all Australian camp under after under eighteens, and then that's when they picked like an AAS, AAS team, yeah, um, and got it was lucky enough to play well, play well, and um, right right time, right place, and got a scholarship. Yeah, I've asked that's this to cool. everyone that's come on. What do you think now that there's like six different wobble divisions for each age group? I think it's great. You're yeah, really. Yeah, because it's like opportunity. Like, yeah, the the sport's growing, and the more people that can play means like, because different people, kids peak through their adolescent years at different times. Yeah. So I'm thinking, the more teams, more competition, the better. I think you're the first person that's had an opinion like that. It's just like bigger. I think I feel like it's a bigger mindset. Like, look at Melbourne, Sydney, um, any other capital city in the world with way bigger population than tiny like Perth. Yeah. It breeds competition, mm-hmm. so more participation breeds more opportunity. Breeds competition, yeah. Breeds better players. <laughs> yeah, well, that's I what mean, I mean. That's in my, in my opinion. That's well. That's, everyone's that's had it. the opinion that it's good because it gives opportunity, but then they're like, there's just so many teams where it's just like some of like these lower teams just shouldn't be at a wobble comp. It's sort of diminishing what wobble is, like it's domestic level. if, yep. if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean. That's like, the, I don't know. I have I have just a different opinion on it. Um, Mine's I, just coaches need coaching. Coaches need coaching exactly, and those kids that don't make the first or second team in wobble now fall off and have to go play footy and whatever. And the sport's growing. Yeah. Um, why not grow with it? Yeah. How old were you when you realised you were good at basketball? Um, probably under fourteens. Mm-hmm. I had a coach called Joe McKay who kind of put me under his wing. Yeah. And. Yeah, kind of backed me and gave me heaps, like a lot of confidence. And um, I was just a gym rat, so that's how I would you know, I'd always be in the gym working on yeah. shot or ball handling. Back then it was like and once, I was always want to try and oh, break really? someone, yeah. like a hot sauce. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that that was probably under 14s and then under 16s. I've been cut by a lot of teams later on down the track, but early on as a junior I had a lot of success. Were you quite small? Small. Yeah. I was always like the small guy. Yeah, yeah, I guess. That's why I thought, yeah, too short for the league. Yeah. I'm on, I'm sure. Yeah, well, you don't quite qualify because you're over six foot. <laughs> oh, do you know what's funny? This is a funny story because I've been preaching that I'm six foot because with two pairs of ankle socks, an ankle brace and a pair of orthotics. Yeah. I'm six foot. You don't play barefoot. You know what Augusta has you listed as? What, six two? Yeah, <laughs> six two. No, I'm actually shrinking, but I'm 6'3 now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. When you pulled out of your car, I'm like, no, I'm 6'2. Like, <laughs> cut, oh, <laughs> cut that, EPG. <laughs> that guy, that guy's 5'9 yeah, and a half. Yeah, nah, I knew you were taller than me, but Can I saw. Can we cut that out? We oh, yeah. Cut this out, yeah. It doesn't matter. Uh, no, I, I saw, I saw a 6'2, and I'm like, man, I don't think he is that tall. <laughs> Uh, God no, man. No, nah, but you have the Put mayo, perinase, aioli all over. Yeah. The- <laughs> you have the good build though, like you're stocky and strong. You know that. Thanks, man. That Joel Wagner. Yeah, I call you, you have to be in this league. I love Wagner to defend. So were you also really skinny? Um, I was just kid? wiry, super quick. Yep. As a junior, just yeah, I just really quick, and I was small, but I was fairly athletic and stuff. I still get around people and things like yeah. that. Yeah. How tall are your parents? I don't know, five, five ten. Oh yeah, dad's probably five ten. Mum's, I don't know, short, five, five two, five three. 
So you've not, never not five yeah, maybe five, six. I don't know, she's not yeah, she's not she's not tall, she's small, but did you ever have coaches tell you that you were just too small? Um yeah, some coaches definitely did. Mm-hmm. And then that's probably why I carried such a big chip on my shoulder. Yeah. My whole life or Yeah. What's it so what uh <clears throat> under sixteen you went for a state? State, yep. And you, you got in? As a two year I got cut, but then top age. I, oh, okay, so your yeah. first tryout, you got cut. Got cut, final cut before reserves. Do they do they give you reasons why? Politics. <laughs> too too small. Yeah, too small. Too short for the league. Yeah. Is it? Obviously, you're talented offensively. Is yep. it too small, like defensive wise? No, I was just like a skinny. I was just a skinny kid, like hit puberty late, I guess. Yeah. And at four, at, what I was fourteen at under sixteen is a two year. Yeah. Um, just one of those late developers and playing against some like guys like Daniel Johnson, who was already like tall, tall, yeah. um, who went on to have an incredible career. Um, so guys like that who are a year older than, than myself, they were just, yeah, a lot more developed. And mm-hmm. at that stage, it just wasn't, yeah, I was short, but I just wasn't good enough. Did that ever... Sit on your mind, like man, I'm just too small, or was it just no, like, oh, just, I just fire in the belly? It was like yeah. fire in the belly and work on my game, get mm-hmm. better. That's it, and then you came back the next year, came back the next year, next year, and captain the team, and started and wow. made all Australian. And wow, was, that's a crazy progression, yeah, <laughs> from not even making the team to yeah, did they have a different coach or whatever? That same year? coach, same one, Joe McKay. Wow, one of my favorite coaches ever, yeah. And how was that your first time? Was that your first time ever being a captain of a team? Or? Nah, I'd um, been lucky enough to be in, kind of in that leadership role most of most of my career in most teams mm-hmm. um, at Willerton as a junior. Yep. Um, and I don't know if that was like a point guard thing or whatever, but yeah. Where'd you go to play? Nationals. Nationals was held at Willerton. Oh, really? So the one year we made, yes, yeah, so we made it and it was at Willardson. Did that annoy you? Or it was, it was no, like, I was like, yeah. that's fine. We stayed at Broadwater Resort. Oh, you still got to stay still in the, the hotel? Boys, yeah. Still, you still got to be in the still hotel. Still all together, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was... Oh, that would have sucked. Finally made the team. Oh, I still got to just be at home. I don't get to do all yeah, that no, fun it was, activities yeah, it's, it's still good. I mean, it wasn't the experience of you know, going over East or whatever. Do you remember who won? None of Wadding Spectres. They had a guy called Zach Natoli. Who, sorry? The None of Wadding... None of Wadding... I don't even know where that is. Um, Melbourne. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pretty sure it's Melbourne. Um, he was incredible. Mm-hmm. Stud. Yeah. Not sure what he's doing now, but he's, yeah, he was, he was unbelievable. Are you one of those players that saw you just remember like all your games? I remember most things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to. I can't remember, like when I was playing, I can't remember like half, really? half the stuff, but I talked to some of my friends and they remember like all their games and like how much points they scored in this game, even assists when it wasn't even tracked. Yeah, like, right. Um, nah, not th- not to that level, but the memorable times I, I do. Yeah. And then you went to under-18s nationals as well? Yeah, went to under-18s. Um, and that's when you were scouted for AIS? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so who would I play for? Mike Ellis? Oh, I really? Mike Ellis, yep. He was a head coach. I've, I mean... Kiss of the deep with coaches, man. We've, yeah. I've had some of the best coaches. Good Alan coaches. Black, um, Rob Beveridge, Marty Clark, Sean Dennis, um, Joe McKay. I've heard Sean Dennis is one of the greatest coaches Yeah, ever. he's good. Uh, he's I, think, really I, good. I think Nixie said that. Yeah, because he, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he took over. Um, he was his assistant at Perry Lakes. Yeah, yeah. So Nixie said that Sean Dennis is like one of the greatest yeah. coaches he's ever met. He's was Mike great. Ellis like an angry coach? No, nah, he's, he's awesome. He was great. He was like, this is what we're doing. He's a ball players coach. Really, I remember going to a Warwick game when he was a coach there. He yep. like kicked a chair, threw a clipboard. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. always just thought he was just like an animated guy. Interesting. He's a, he yeah maybe he's just super competitive. Like he's super passionate and competitive. But I know. I mean, I don't remember anything like that. He'd yep. He'd chew us out and spray us if you weren't doing it. Yeah, we weren't weren't doing the right thing, but. We had a pretty talented team. That was like Godfrey, Trini, Liardis. Um, who else did we have back then that went on? Um, I've gone blank. Oh, obviously, Cody Ellis. Yep. He was a stud. Um, yeah. We, oh, is Cody Ellis the same age as you? Year younger. So yeah, him, okay. and Buff, him and Buff, are you younger than me? Yep. He was, he's quite tall. Yeah. Cody Ellis. Cody. Even though Mike's not the tallest guy. Yep. Yeah, no. Nah. He's um, 
Cody has an inc- incredible career. Yeah, yeah. Well, she was still playing. <laughs> yeah, does that like annoy you or like being you know, like the guys similar age to you sort of retiring? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been seeing it, seeing it for so long. So. Yeah. But yeah, life, as, as you get older, I think priorities change and um, that's how it goes, right? Mm. So you obviously must have performed really well at that Nationals tournament uh, to get scouted by AIS. Yeah, yep. Were you um, the captain of that team as well? Not at the AS? No, oh, no that, the, uh, the state 18s, team. Yeah, yeah. W, yeah, WA was. Um, Starting point guard as well? Yeah. Um, yeah, went to the AS and then that's when um, went through that stage. I, was, I, was, I was, went to 18 State, playing for Willerton, um, went to the AS. But how, how does that work? Do they hit you up and go, here, here's an offer? Or like- no, no. So it's just like you go to all, an All-Australian camp. Okay. And there was a couple of there was I think there's only a few scholarships available because um, across two years I played up mm-hmm. to get it and I went to an all Australian camp and that was where Paddy Mills was there mm-hmm. um, and I remember the best advice I got uh, from Brad Robbins um, I said oh you got any pointers for us um, and he said to me he goes well go up to the coach listen to what he let's a listen to what he's saying and doing what he say but at some point have a conversation with the coach show you're invested and say what is it to the T that you want me to do Mm -hmm. and then go and do that bring good energy be a good teammate and um and should hold you in good stead yeah so yeah I did that and um yeah I've um and yeah it it went well I ended up getting a scholarship and that was like that was that was huge for me for like a WA small point guard to get a, mm. a scholarship to the AS. I think the last one before that was Carlin Hughes. Don't and prior to that, Adam Caporn. Oh, okay. So, yeah. But that, uh, I don't know, I guess class was pretty stacked. I mean, you, uh, Paddy Mills yeah. and Matthew Delavadova. Delavadova. Those are stacked guards. Geordie Page, Cam Glidden, um, Tyson like, Demos. Was that Cam in that photo? Yeah. yeah he t- looks different. Tyson Demos, um, Shannon Seabomb. Yeah. Uh, AJ Ogilvy, oh wow, um, Daniel Johnson. It was a yeah, it was pretty super stacked. Like, um, yeah, some of those guys went on to have just an extremely successful career yeah. and still playing. Obviously, you saw. Um, I think, I think who got up in that last game? I think Melbourne. We saw. You saw what Delhi did the other day. Thirty and ten. Thirty ten seven. Yeah, what's uh what's it like in the AS? So are you just going to school and then you're playing games on weekends or? I'd I'd graduated so um, oh. at that time because in Perth we f- were finishing school back then at seventeen, whereas the guys in the east, in the eastern states graduated eighteen. Okay. So I got a job in the mailroom, just basically driving a little golf buggy, <laughs> and that mail was great. <laughs> in between, but you had to do like get up extra shots, um, do extra individuals, yep. all those things. So it's just it's just a hot box competitive environment where it just speeds up your development. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was awesome. Who were you versing at that time? Because now they verse like NBA one Siebel. teams. Yes, yeah, so we played okay. in the Siebel, which now is what NBA one East is that? Uh, Queensland is it? That's NBA one NBA one North. Huh. But it was a, the Siebel was like a mixture of any all the teams on the East Coast. So it was yep. pretty good, um, really good actually. A yep. lot of the um, NBA guys would play in that league, whereas now yeah yeah playing all leagues. Um, but yeah, that's what you would do. So you'd train all week. You'd go. You'd play Seabull on the weekend. Um, every two or three months, you'd go on an overseas trip. Oh wow! Um, and you'd, you know, potentially get offered to go on different tours and whatnot. Um, yeah, for me, I was lucky enough to go on about four or five, maybe six different ch- tours. Mm-hmm. So like China and all over the place with Andrew Gaze and yeah, well, yeah, it was it was a. Pretty awesome experience. So yeah, very grateful. So you were there for two years, or you had a two-year scholarship? No, one year. One year. How does it? Is most people just there for one year anyway? Depends on how. Depends on like the the age group because they usually tied in with the emus, which is every two years. Yep. That, that world tournament. So, if you're a bottom age, you might get lucky because you you can stay two years, mm-hmm. or if they get you early, even longer. Some guys have spent three. Yep. Uh, ben Tatuli was there, was there for three. He's a blue boy. He was a gun. Paddy did, was Paddy was a camera boy, so he spent three years at the shoot. Okay, what's the center of excellence? What you what's the it? process like if you're just not performing midway through the year? Do they just get rid of you, or do they just keep you? No, you lock. You kind of locked in. Yeah, you okay. Get, you spend a year, and then they'll 
over crew, crew yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. At least that's my understanding of it. Mm-hmm. Might be a bit, might be a bit more cutthroat or different because it's quite a heavy investment. Yeah. in each player. Um, what was your goal at the time? Was it NBA? No. So mine was like, I want to play NBA at the time. I was, I don't know, first girlfriend, and I was just <laughs> like, yeah, I was. I thought, I thought the NBA was kind of capped, and that's why I. I run clinics and coach kids and mentor and I'm always like hey like the NBA is not out of your reach like think big dream big mm-hmm. um, and go and explore that and you can always come back to the NBL yep um, but back then there was only six six or so teams in the NBL mm-hmm. whereas now the league's grown and basketball in general is just did you go to college after AIS or did you come back home I actually saw as a development player for Rob Beveridge and Sean Dennis at West Sydney Razorbacks. West Sydney Razorbacks, okay. Out, out in Homebush. So yeah. at 18, moved to Sydney. Um, and Did they give you a place to stay or? No, I stayed with my Uncle Jay. Oh, so you had family over there? I had, yeah. Um, my Uncle John was there. So stayed with him, girlfriend moved over, and wow. Damien Mark would help. Like, I'd catch a bus or, or whatever, get a lift to him or he'd swing by and pick me up him and Graham down and Reese Carter mm-hmm. they'd help me help with just like picking us up from the bus or train and go to practice with them yeah like that. so that was this is going back like 18 17 years man <laughs> yeah crazy yeah. and your goal at the time was still to make to NBL yeah I wanted to play in the NBL yeah I was still like a young skinny kid like straight out of the AS like didn't you got guys that are like providing for families and yeah and um you know, like fully grown men, I was still, yep, yeah, young and skinny, and had only ever like really lived in Perth type of thing. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, it was a great experience, but there came a point where I was like, I'm not going to get. I'm like the, I'm like the twelfth man. I'm like the twelfth, um, I guess, thing on the coach's mind. Like, you know, still putting in the work and doing everything that the team does, but then trying to do extra. And um, I, that's when I kind of thought, I sat down. Rob Beveridge was like, Hey, look. And you got a girlfriend and all that, but you need to go to college. Like that's the best pathway. So you're not going to really? you're not really going to get the opportunity because nowadays development players, there's so much more opportunity. Yeah. Um, whereas it was less then. Like I was backing up an imp- an import Dunnell Hinson and Damien Martin and mm-hmm. all these guys who had just gone on to like their Hall of Fame guys. Yeah. Um, so yeah, getting their drink bottles was like. <laughs> yeah, that's that's as far as my role was going. I wasn't hitting the I wasn't hitting the court. So, so then your goal changed to going to college. Go to college, get a degree, study, just think bigger. What was how was the process of going to college? Like what happened? Like do you send out tapes or? Um, so yes, so back then it was like DVD <laughs> for YouTube and stuff. Man. <laughs> DVD, yeah. Senate Express Post, cost you, I don't know forty bucks. This is like two thousand ten, two thousand nine, two thousand nine. Two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah, two thousand eight. Would you have been like one of the first few Perth people to go to? No, nah, there was a few that had been. Um, Greg Hire um, went to college. Cam Tovey. There's a lot, a lot of guys that did go. Okay. Um, Adam K. Bourne, um, Carlin. There's a bunch of guys that went to college, um, but I was like ineligible because I'd replayed West Sydney. Oh. So I went to a junior college, Missouri State West Plains. Yep. Um, and went so got in the system, graduated from JUCO, and then went to Augusta State. Okay, so JUCO is one year, two, two, two. two yeah. Do you have to study there as well? I have to study, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. Like we're pretty, we're pretty blessed with the education system in Australia. <laughs> yeah. What are you studying at JUCO? Like a, it's just English degree. Oh, okay. Like a general. So in America, you have like it's a four year school. So in your first two years, you do like general studies, mm-hmm. um, and then you do a bachelor. Yep. So you. Um, major in whatever you yeah. want to do. So so after your JUCO and then you got your... Then I tried out. Yes, yeah, so I flew out to Augusta. Oh, it's a tryout. Yeah. Never heard that story before. Yeah, and then that's where Deep Metris, um, Rob McKinley, who is the head coach of the AIS now, mm-hmm. Basketball Centre of Excellence, he was the assistant coach at Augusta State. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, they offered us a scholarship. Um, and... What... Uh, is it NCAA or N- NCAA? Div. I uh, did too. Okay. Yeah. So what they a couple of years ago they lost in the championship game, but they're like one of the most winningest schools over the last oh, really? decade. Yeah. They're yeah. Really good. Really good Division Two school. Was that the only school you sort of looked at, or? Uh, no, there were a bunch of different schools um, that are a bunch of different ones, but nowhere near as as good as what 
um, Augusta was, mm-hmm. um, and knowing that a lot of other Australians had been through, yeah, um, kind of paved the way. And they offered it at a point where I was, I went from Missouri State, which was like on the farm, to Augusta, which is this thing. There's other things to do. Mm-hmm. How's uh like the money situation when you're over there? Like, how do you pay for food? Yeah, so I'm on scholarships. So you still you do get, um, like money in your scholarship yeah only goes so far but i mean it's not you know to go out for a meal isn't 20 bucks over there you can like they got the dollar menu at yes <laughs> yeah so what is your diet was your diet horrendous oh shocking, man. <laughs> yeah well, I kinda, they, they call it the freshman 15 yeah first year in america because everything's oversized so like yeah you you don't eat healthy like yeah the produce everything's processed and just shit did you finally put on size yeah man yeah. i was Look like a pear, <laughs> just and I was training all day, lifting weights and stuff. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when did you get like your basketball IQ? Um, I don't know, just from playing, man, playing against older guys, being exposed to different environments, um, different leagues, different people, um, players that are older, more experienced, and just trial and error, trial and error, mm-hmm. like, just. Blood, sweat, tears, a lot of bench time, a lot of turnovers. <laughs> yeah. Have you, like, when you got to college, did you think you were, like, one of the smartest on the team? Um, I definitely, over there, like, guards are dime a dozen over there, but they're, like, athletic as hell. Yeah. So I was super quick and fit and athletic here, but on, like, the world scale in America, not not, not where, I'd, not where yeah, I would yeah. love to be. Um, so then you... You know, different things come important, like your angles and understanding the scout or, yeah. you know, how you move, who you're guarding, personnel, yeah. stuff like that. You're forced to think about yeah. that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, everywhere I played, probably pick up something, every coach something, um, mm-hmm. and I probably that. I don't want to make you feel old. <laughs> but you're probably, like, the last generation of, like, true point guards, you know, that CP3, uh, Jason Kidd sort of point guard where now you know they're like the Mike Malats where they just want to jack up shots and, and stuff like that yeah but you've played in both yeah eras yeah the game's involved like there's no such thing Damien Martin's probably like the the dying breed of pure points yep maybe Mitch Norton as well yeah yeah he's around, around now uh, but now like you've got to be able to score shoot like and as a guard I feel like you can't have holes in your game especially in the NBA it's such a good league like, if you can't shoot, you get exposed pretty quick. Yep. So did you ever have to adapt your – or have you had to adapt, adapt your game? Yeah, over the years. Yeah. Um, did you struggle with that at all? I think I I think I did because I went through that transition and obviously didn't play at the level that I wanted to. love to. Like, would love to have got a shot in the NBL and had a bit more um, – I guess made the most of the opportunities I had. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it, you know, you've got to be able to score the ball. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you get left exposed. Yep. And your college career at Augusta, when did you average like 14 points a game? Oh, no, nah, way less than that. Oh, really? Um, at Juco, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but at Augusta was like up and down, man. Sometimes I'll start and play really well, come off the bench, I won't play. And it was... Was that tough for you? Yeah. Just the inconsistency? Absolute head. Yeah, because you're over there and you're going through different things. Adversity of being away from your family, no support network. Yeah, yeah. I was, at that time, I was going through breakups and all kinds of yeah stuff that was just not even basketball related. And I was like, oh. communication would have been a lot harder back then as well because you can't just go FaceTime. FaceTime, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like it's call card zero zero one one one. Yeah, a lot more yeah, isolated. Then, huh? A lot more isolated. So, yeah, it felt like that. But but also that's where like that was the beauty of it. I felt I had more personal development than basketball development by mm-hmm. going to college. Yep. Um, which sets you up and helps you with your, your – that was part of my story and journey, Yeah. Um, I guess, growing up. So you don't, like, regret going over or Not at all. No, no, I don't. don't you do really, it again? I don't live like that, no. Yeah, I'd do it all over again and I'd encourage anyone to – if you've got the opportunity to go to college, yep. 100%, you get a free degree. Yeah. No hex. What would you study? I studied business, um, business management. Yep. Graduated with that. And then I was like, look, I'm 20, 21. I, can, I'm not, I can't even manage my own life. Like, <laughs> I'll go back and do – I did market, a marketing degree yeah, um, because I thought that would be um, appealing to recruiters yeah. getting a job. Um, 
and then I went back and did finance because that was through the social media boom. So yeah, yeah. Now you got people getting paid three or four grand every post. Yeah, yeah. Just if they've got you know a few thousand followers, let alone yeah bigger than that. So I was like, oh man. So you're kind of smart, I'm like a brainiac. No, 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 oh, wow. no, 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 not at all. I, I was just a hustler. Yeah, I found it like really hard to just sit down and study for like longer periods of time. Yeah, I'm like that as well, man. Yeah. I, I read a book and I'm like, read ten pages, forgot the last five. Oh, I can read I books. Can I can read books, but yeah. like in a classroom setting, man, I'm just like, get me out of here. Like I'll yeah. do it on my own. Like I don't yeah, want to have to be like confined that. confined in this. You graduate college. Yep. And then you come back to Perth, is it? Came out to Perth and Bevo was the head coach of the Wildcats. Yep. And there's an opportunity, uh, like development spots available. Yep. Did you have to go try out for that? Yep, did. There are a couple paid spots. Yep. And a, cu- and, a, and a couple that weren't. Yeah. I got one of the couple that weren't. Yep. And so worked three or four different other jobs. And you're not allowed to travel with the team, is that right, as a DP? Unless you're going to play? No, you can. Oh, really? You can if you get, yeah. Now Nowadays, uh, Tasmania had an interview with one of their DPs. And they can't travel. Yeah, right. If you're a DP, you can't travel with the team. So if they come over to Perth, if they're not rostered on to play, they can't travel. Yeah, interesting. But they do get paid. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So what sort of odd jobs were you doing? I was a marketing manager at Willerton. I worked as a boarding master at Aquinas. Oh, yeah. I coach kids nearly every morning. Yeah. Um, I worked at a Telstra dealer, an account manager. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or you were just doing all this whilst you were trying to go all in on basketball? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was, I did like a, a door knocking car sales, um, a door knocking um, sales job selling yeah. car cleaning wax. Yeah. Yeah, just whatever you That's good do. fun, eh? I did oh, door knock. I did for the charities. Worst. It was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to, up to this one house and I knocked on the door. No one answered, so I knocked again. And it's like nearing the end of the day. I'm like, I just need to speak to like one more person. And then I look at the window and there's a sign that says, uh, no hawkers or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no. So I walk down. This old guy finally opens the door, comes out. You f- <laughs> with a fucking knife starts chasing me down this, <laughs> this uh, driveway. <laughs> I'm just like, this is Crazy. hectic. Yeah. And I think I quit probably like a month after that. <laughs> yeah, it was brutal. So I did that for a few months. So I've done, done a whole bunch of different yeah, sales jobs and jobs just to, to get by while I'm still trying to keep the dream alive and play mm-hmm. play hoops. When you're trying out for those import spots, were there many other guards or was it like wings or bigs? Like, What's this for? For the DP for Wildcats. Oh, the so, so there was well, everyone in, in WA or whoever the coaches. So there was there was like Trian, Gav, Michael Vigar, Ben Persa, yep. myself. Um, and then they had like an academy as well. Yeah. Like Damien Scott. Um, Damn, is Damien Scott the same age as you as well? No, no, he's oh. three years younger. Yeah, okay. Damien is a lot one of my best mates. So yeah, yeah. I speak to him quite a lot. Yeah. And you and Vigor made that team then? Yeah. 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 Just so used we're to? All DPs. We're all DPs. So we had like, um, yeah, the five of us um, ended up you know, becoming pretty tight and being friends. We were friends before that anyways because we played. Yeah. What was the phone call like when you got it? First got to play and Bevo? No, nah, like you got the spot. As a DP, yeah, um, yeah, it was great. I'd I'd been a DP before, so I was kind of like, all right, cool. Yeah, I'd really want to take had that fire in the belly to yeah, tr- hopefully play or you know, yeah, sit on the bench or. And then you finally in two games for the first game, he finally yeah. calls you up, goes, "I'm going to see you up." Heritage round, he was like, "Yep, you've been playing well, and um, your attitude's better, and blah blah blah, and um, yeah, you can get a shot." And I was like. Yes. Was this the season yes. that you lost to the New Zealand Breakers in the yes. finals? Yeah. Oh, knowledge. <laughs> there you go. So what, did you go home straight away? And like, oh, I was like, man, let's go. Yeah. To my older brother, I was like, let's go. My younger brother. And then, um, yeah, probably used all the money that I had made from the three or four different other jobs to pay for tickets for all my friends and family. Oh, they didn't give you tickets? Like, no, a bit, no. no. This was like one of the first years of RSC as well, wasn't first it? First year of RSC, yeah. The first year? Yeah. Wow, that's it was Crazy. really cool. Yeah. Then you finally got on. Well, it was a blowout. Yeah. Twenty got to go on, and it was yeah. I was like yes. Because well, as a kid, I would like would go to like in the nineties, we'd go to the entertainment center, Perth Entertainment Center, like once a year to watch Wildcats. So yeah. It was, it was a big thing. So. What uh, do you remember? Like the quarter and the time, like how much time was left in the game when you got on? Probably about three. Probably about three minutes or so. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I remember all my mates being there, yeah, um, in the crowd, and yeah, just being like, oh yes, <laughs> like dry mouth, yeah, nervous. As did you step? Did you step out on the court and just like? Uh, no, I remember everything. I was super sensory, so I'm like, oh, I remember the smell, the sounds. I blocked out everything. All I could hear was like coach bench and what was happening on the court. Yep. And then your first defensive possession, where yep. you're like, holy crap, this is way faster. Or? My first defense, I got a steal. Did you? I think. Damn. Damn. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I just remember having a real dry mouth, man. Rest yep. is a blur. <laughs> And did you get an assist that game, or was it the assist the yeah, next game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, so you got your steal and the assist your first game. Yeah. And then you got to suit up for your second game. Yeah. And then yeah. do you remember much of the, about your second game? Or? Oh, I missed a shot in the corner. Yeah. I thought it was money too. <laughs> it felt like really Spewing, good. Yeah, it felt yeah. really good. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> Imagine if, go in, go in, go yeah. in. There's a, go in. There's like an, uh, some website that keeps track of all NBL players, no matter even like no matter how many minutes they got. And it said like had a description about you, and then just went went scoreless for his NBL career. Like, oh, oh, ouch. Yeah, I was like, oh man, that was ouch. that was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> After your Wildcats uh, endeavors or whatever, where'd yeah. you go? Back to Willow? Uh, no, Bevo moved on, so he didn't get he didn't resign with the Wildcats, and I was like, damn, I'm 23, 24. I'm not or 23. Mm -hmm. At that stage, 22 was like the development player cut. Yep. And I was like, damn, I'm not ready to like grow up and get a job. Like, I want to play basketball, taste. I want to, yeah. So I flew over to Sydney mm -hmm. and tried out for a point guard spot under Shane Hill, mm -hmm. Sydney Kings. And and yeah, I remember day day one. I started on like court three, and by day three, I was on court one and yeah, playing. And um, they took two point guards, Sean Gleason and myself, and yeah signed a deal with Sydney. Oh, how long were you there for? Stayed the whole season. Yep. Um, first, for the first game, I did my ankle. Yep. And actually thought it was just a sprain. Um, so I was rehabbing it, but it wasn't helping, wasn't going down. And then, um, and then got an MRI because the resources weren't the same. Like, yeah. Back then, back then, yeah, they have now. You're old, um, <laughs> and and it was broken. Oh, jeez, I know. So I was. How like, many weeks did you go until you realised it was broken? Till that four. <sighs> yeah, so it was pretty brutal. So it was fractured, and then it broke. Yeah, and then I was out for the next four, five, four, five months. Yep, uh, four months, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And um, Shane Hammer was like, you know, mate, I've I've, I've got to release you. Yeah, and won't you still be part of it and all of that? But I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was pretty brutal because I was like, you know, constantly trying to work your way back in yep. um, to get an opportunity and then that happened, but that's, that's how, that's sport. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're sort of running out of time here, so we've got to... Yeah, yeah, let's punch through. Season expectations. What are the goals for the season? Um, top four. Top four? Wow. Yeah. I mean, your import... I, oh, seen... I mean, make finals, but top four. Yeah, I haven't seen your, I haven't seen your import, yeah. so I have no idea how he's mm. going to go. Um, so we've got an import coming, and we've got Reese Vague coming in. Saber Reese is looking huge, by the way. Yeah, I think he's got a he's got a chi well, he's got a chip on his shoulder. So yeah, well, well, I feel like he wants to dominate and go into hit the NBL and have a good year next year. Yeah. So him. top four. How do you think you'll go? Like you personally? Personally, um, I'm really excited. The style of play we're playing is pretty fun. Mm -hmm. It suits my style of game. It's been a few years since I've played that way. Yep. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm. I think. I think. Well, I think I'm going to have a positive impact. I hope to. Mm. Um, just stay healthy and, um, yeah, knock on wood, <laughs> touch wood. <laughs> Any players to look out for this season? Uh, well, Coburn to start off with. I think. Well, you saw what Gav can do on any night. Josh Hunt. Mm -hmm. I think Josh Hunt. He was elite be, last I night. I think he could be. A, I think he's a stud. Yeah. Um, play by the rim. Score. Three levels, he's he's tough. So I think um, in the right structure and guidance, he could be whatever he wants to be. To be fair, yep. Um, probably, probably people have probably been saying that for the last couple of years, but yeah. he's still young. He's, too, he's twenty-two or something. Yeah, I think he's one year younger than me. Yeah. Yeah. So he um he can really go. So he's definitely him. I think Hunter's got a chip on his shoulder. Um, and then around the league, I would say I think Ethan Elliott is going to be have a really good standout year. Mm -hmm. Provided the ball stays in his hands, because there's 
there's a few ball dominant guys I think in yep. that team. Um, who else? I think Julian Paseva. Oh yeah, he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. I think yep. Mandra. I think he'll he'll really thrive in that position. I don't think he had by his expectation probably the best experience in Adelaide at Mount Gambier. So mm-hmm. I think he'll I think he's going to be out um, to ball out. Marshall, I think Nelson. I think yep. he's going to dominate. Um, and Damo Scott. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think last year, yeah, Scotty, Scotty's my boy, and yeah, I, I um, I love talking shit to him. But he, yeah, I think he's been a stud in this league for forever. Yeah. Um, but last year probably took a bit of a backward step because they were pretty stacked. Yeah, I think maybe this year. Well. Yeah, they, I mean they, yeah, they did great. Yeah. Um, but I think he can really take over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Coburn as a goal coming top four. Um, my season predictions. I think I had you like tenth or something. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, right, man. That's the. That's the I like so hearing prove that. Prove me shit. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah prove me wrong. Uh, oh, you, you asked me what the goal was, and I like yeah. It's, I mean, from what fi- I saw, finals, what I saw last night. You guys played really well. Like you share the ball like really well. Yeah, we got a good crew. We got some talent. We got some firepower. If, I mean, if we can pull it. If, when we pull it together, um, might take a few weeks or, or yeah. whenever, but I think when we do, we definitely got the talent and the structure and, um, yeah. yeah, the personnel to make that happen. Let's get into some trash talk. You get to ankle break, one player in the league, who are you doing it to? Ooh, probably someone I know I can at any point, and um, he's probably really scared to guard me, Damien Scott. <laughs> All right, you're there, mate. Damo, you're going to get ankle broken this season. All right, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for coming on the show, mate. It's been a See great you. chat. And I'll like, follow, subscribe, do what you need to do. Thank you to our sponsors once again. And that's it. Ciao.